Next up in the session, we have Bill Weatherhold. We'll be presenting collaborative quarters to address OSM underrepresentation. The floor is yours, Bill. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to the people that put this on. It is most appreciated. Um, been kind of a hectic day on my end, but let's go ahead and get started. I've only got 10 minutes. Let's jump into it. Um, so as Jess said, I'm, I'm Bill Weatherholt. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview here. I'll sort of talk about where I'm situated, how this sort of the, the germinations of this discussion in general, how this collaborative corridor has emerged, really what we've done so far this semester, what we plan to do before the semester is out, and arguably a call to action for others that are interested in similar, similar collaborative efforts. Um, I think it's proving to be relatively effective. So I am an associate professor of geography at Frostburg State in Western Maryland. You can see the little where the, the Frostburg Bobcats, see the paw print there. So we are smack dab in Appalachia, sort of the Western three counties of Maryland fall under the Appalachian Regional Commission's designation of Appalachia. Um, so a relatively small university, about 4,000 students or so nestled in the nestled in the Appalachian Mountains. It's a really nice setting. Um, but when it comes to representation in OpenStreetMap, um, for comparison, you can see sort of in the bottom, the scale bar, sort of at the 50 meter scale, something like the capital of the country that's only about two, two and a half hours from campus has an incredible amount of representation in OpenStreetMap. I mean, even down to individual trees um, in and around the capital. But at the same scale, if you move towards my neck of the woods, about four miles down the mountain in this little town called LaVale, um, right along the interstate, there's hardly anything there. I mean, there are things there, but as far as OpenStreetMap is concerned, there's not a lot of representation. So if you were at the state of the map in Tucson in April, um, I talked about map in Appalachia, that was the, the presentation. Um, and this was one of the slides or a portion of the slides that I gave. And one of the key things that sort of came up in the discussion was how do we address underrepresentation? How do we try to map these, these regions that are not really in the map yet? Um, and one potential solution was to utilize key transportation corridors. Um, and the National Road is the first federally funded highway in the United States. Um, it was connecting Cumberland, which is the county seat here in Maryland in Allegheny County to Wheeling, West Virginia. So it basically connected the Potomac River to the Ohio River. Um, and it's it still is a key corridor. And so I called on other individuals that would maybe be interested um, in the Appalachian region to try to um, to try to do um, to contribute. Um, sorry, my phones go, my watch is going off and stuff. Very, very distracting. Um, and Dr. Thomas Mueller at Penn West University um, reached out and we over the semester have engaged in conversation. And you can see sort of the, in terms of in open street map, US 40, which interstate 68 sort of parallels here around me. Um, but then sort of breaks towards the Northwest, towards Uniontown, and ultimately towards California, Pennsylvania, which is where Tom is located. There's about 70 miles between us. And so through discussion, <clears throat> excuse me, arguably um, a collaborative corridor has emerged between us and between our students. And this semester, and on my end, primarily in the last three or four weeks, um, we have been mapping along US 40. So not necessarily national road, but US 40 is the next, I mean, it follows the exact same corridor that then Interstate 68 sort of has replaced US 40. But so we've, we're using US 40 as a main artery between these two vested interests to start to fill in the map. And so in my cartography course and in Tom's GeoBiz course, um, students have been contributing to essentially this US 40 corridor. And we've received a lot of support from Teach OSM US. Um, we received an OSM collaboration grant for which we are most appreciative. 
Um, Jess and Steve and have done some wellness checks as far as just seeing how things are going, if we need support to sort of see this, this project realized. Um, and the latest installation is in this creation of the tasking manager for this individual project. So the, the hashtag, the Map Appalachia Endeavor continues. Uh, and on my side, essentially what we've been trying to do in Frostburg, um, in the last three labs that I've given in cartography, I introduced them to OpenStreetMap. Um, there's also been lecture material paired to participatory mapping that I've given. Um, last week, we started with using the tasking manager um, for the US 40 corridor, and I asked students to provide me 40 batches of edits utilizing this tasking manager. Uh, and this week, we are just continuing with the same sort of muscle memory and building on momentum, and I'm requesting an additional 50 batches of changes. So, I mean, it's really starting to play out, and when you look at the, at the individual task, um, it's, it's starting to fill in nicely. Um, there are some limitations. Uh, it's, again, I mentioned it's US 40 and not necessarily National Highway. Uh, and if you see sort of National Highway coming up through the Vale, so it's not quite the same. See, National Highway is sort of this, this little piece that arcs up and around where the interstate goes through. But so utilizing US 40, um, and if you see this particular tasking polygon here, um, you can see this is the before, and that's that same lowly little stretch of road that I showed you that I compared to the Capitol. Uh, so that's sort of the before. And <clears throat> checking this afternoon, you can see that um, the students have put some edits in there. But again, the idea of that buffer you can almost sort of see where the tasking manager allowed them to contribute, <clears throat> excuse me, and where they didn't. And so there's, there's definite room for future opportunity and future corridors so that I-68 and US-40 running together um, is a little bit of a limitation in some respects because there's not a lot of population right in and along the interstate corridor, but there certainly are individuals and contributions are being made. Um, I've been asking for some before and after imagery, some screenshots. Um, this is one of my students sort of in the long, uh, just a little bit west of where that previous screenshot was. So contributions are being made. And I've asked students some of their impressions on OpenStreetMap and participatory mapping in general. And I'm not going to read that verbatim. That seems sort of aggressive. But you can see that the impressions are pretty beneficial. I mean, they they appreciate the equity in OpenStreetMap. They see that if communities utilize this sort of thing, um, that it's pretty easy to put information on the map. So where people are underrepresented, representation can be sought in these sort of collaborative, bottom-up approaches. Another student said that OpenStreetMap empowers local communities because it allows information about these communities to be shared on a large platform, like what we're doing right now. Public free knowledge is the greatest tool to help communities connect with the greater population. And I, I think that's a pretty poignant um, remark from an undergraduate student in one of, my, one of my classes. So where are we headed? How much time do I have left? I like a minute and a half. So next week for the non-geographers in the room is Geography Awareness Week in the United States. Um, and Wednesday in particular is GIS Day. So our relatively new Youth Mappers chapter is going to be hosting a mapathon, and I think we're just going to contribute to this task because there's still more work to be done. It's not all finished. Intermediate mappers can do some validation, so on and so forth. And the students that have already been working on it gives them opportunities to maybe help introduce new students to it. And at the before the semester is out, I've organized a, a meeting at Fort Necessity which is essentially about halfway between the two universities. Um, and there's a really nice national road installation. And if it all plays according to plan, it would be a good opportunity for everybody to get together and decompress and see what worked and what didn't. Um, and as far as that goes, sort of that, that call to action, that this, I think this method is effective. It's just beginning. It's only a couple of weeks into, into this project or this experiment, 
but it's bearing fruit. I mean, they're, the underrepresented areas are starting to appear on the map. So I think that this is an effective methodology if other universities or just vested OSM interests could come together that are in relatively close proximity to one another, that um, addressing underrepresentation can be, can be done in a collaborative fashion. So I don't want to take up extra time. My timer just went off. If I'll check the, the Slack, or the, sorry, not the Slack, muscle memory there. I'll check the chat um, and you can see my OSM username and contact information there. So again, thank you very much for your time and I'll, I'll leave it there.